Hey, space fans, it's Tarek Malik, editor-in-chief of Space.com, and have you ever wanted to drive in the moon? Because I do, and that's why on This Week in Space, we talked to A.J. Gemmer, uh, co-founder of Lunar Outpost. They are building rovers for the moon and plans for the lunar terrain vehicle called Eagle. Check it out. Well, you, you mentioned Artemis there, A.J., and I, I, have, to, I have to say, my, my colleague Brett Tingley was extremely excited at Space Symposium this year, uh, when when you unveiled the uh, uh, the LTV, you know, like the the the, the mock up there for the for the Eagle rover itself, and that's like a truck, like you're building a truck to drive on the moon, and not like not like a like a how am I going to say this? It's not a lame truck, right? It's not it's, it's not like uh, like a bunch of it's not like a box on wheels. It looks very sci fi, very. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, kind of sleek uh, and whatnot, and and a little bit beyond just being what we talk, what Rod was talking about earlier, uh, like the vaporware or whatnot, because you've got the hardware in place. You've got, uh, I believe, like an agreement um, with with um, or 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 an understanding with SpaceX for a Starship delivery method uh, for for this truck. And I'm curious if you can let our listeners know, like like where this this lunar terrain vehicle, this LTV Eagle, came from, because it it really looks like a souped up. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> like just a, a souped up rover for uh for Artemis astronauts there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, I'll say um, as NASA performed their planning for the the Artemis missions, they saw how uh, the Apollo era lunar roving vehicle just dramatically increased the crew's capabilities to explore, and I mean, really led to many of the key discoveries that were made during the Apollo missions. So they knew they were going to need mobility for the Artemis astronauts as well, um, and so they uh, they asked for proposals to develop the lunar train vehicle services, which is an important distinction. It's a nod to that um, that shift towards a more commercially supported. Um, you know, program for NASA. And, uh, and we responded to that. And I'll say, you know, for myself, my inspiration comes uh, a lot of a lot from classic science fiction. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> Growing up, my, my dad had this, you know, excellent sci fi bookshelf full of all the all the classics, all the greats. And what was really interesting to me that I that I see now is, um, you know, a lot of that classic science fiction was written, you know, before, Spaceflight and rockets was even a thing, right? And so they were they were imagining um, the future of space completely unencumbered by the yeah. realities of what it's like to operate out there. That's for sure. Yeah, and and so um, for me, I have always wanted to bring kind of that imaginative beauty of those early sci-fi craft. You know, they're they're very sleek and aerodynamic, which of course doesn't matter at all when you're in a vacuum. But um, you know, I said, well, I, I would like our spaceflight hardware to be as beautiful as it is functional. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's what we've achieved with the Eagle LTV. Um, it is, you know, everything you see there, like every other piece of spaceflight hardware has a purpose. It's there for a reason, you know, but it doesn't have to be, um, just blocky black and white. It can be, you know, beautiful as well. Well, it's way better looking than Amazon's slate truck. So I got to <laughs> give you kudos for that. So I, I was looking at your website specific to this vehicle and see that you very smartly aligned yourselves with a couple of partners who worked on the original lunar roving vehicle. So I assume there was a lot of, I mean, this is obviously a whole different animal, but there are certainly lessons to be learned about tires, quote unquote, traction and operation and maybe batteries, certainly navigation and guidance. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we've we've put together just a world class team with you know Lunar Outpost as the prime, and then General Motors, Motors, Goodyear Tire and Rubber, MDA Space, and Lidos Dynetics. And each of those team members brings something you know, unique and critical to the development of the Eagle LTV. With Goodyear, you have you know a hundred plus years of um, terrestrial vehicles, off road capabilities, and their latest in you know battery technology and vehicle dynamics. Uh, Goodyear, of course, you have the spring mesh tires, which are ideally suited to operations on the lunar surface. MDA Space, you know, they developed the Canada Canada arm, the robotic arm aboard the space shuttle. So you know, very high reliability robotics um, and very safe around the crew. And then Lidos Dynetics uh, also bringing that crew human safety aspect to the team. So all together, you know, I think we've developed the the safest, most functional and most advanced 
answer to NASA's needs for the lunar terrain vehicle. And I mentioned the, the commercial side of it as well. And, you know, the lunar terrain vehicle is also designed to serve a wide range of commercial customers. They can put their payloads on there. We can swap them out. We can collect samples, deliver them to wherever the customer might want it to go. And so um, our interactions with our, our commercial customers and our really unique business model that we that we built up through the MAP and Lunar Voyage 1 uh, programs um, puts us in that position to make sure that we're really meeting commercial customer needs and providing great value to NASA at the same time. You know, Rod mentioned infrastructure earlier and, and your, your note about, AJ, the, the kind of commercial customer world versus like the, the government contract world, I think is really interesting because it, it you know, it, it kind of brings to light like a, a use for a rover such as this one uh, that goes beyond like, well, the astronauts are there and they need like a, a, a way to drive around to go farther, right? Uh, you have a robotic arm on there and I'm, I'm curious what you're hoping your users will be able to do. Like, let's say it's between Artemis missions, but your rover, uh, the LTV is already there. I mean, mm -hmm. it, is it is it autonomous in that kind of a way where someone could book some time on it and drive it over to go look at this thing or that thing or or that they contract with you? to, you know, they, they've got a cargo that just landed, but they need someone to go get it. And you can, you know, dri drive the rover that way. Is that kind of uh, uh, another use for the rover that you hope it'll serve? Yes, exactly. So the crew will actually only be there for a short period of uh, the LTV's overall lifespan. Um, the rest of the time, it will be teleoperated or autonomously operated from here on Earth. And that time is split between uh, NASA science expeditions and, as you said, all manner of uh, commercial activities. And it's worth mentioning, too, that there's not just one LTV. You know, our vision is that this is truly the work truck for the moon. And so, you know, we will have tens or hundreds of them deployed in the coming decades, able to meet those customer visions and you know, build that, that infrastructure that's required for humans to maintain a permanent presence on the moon. So how much for this week in space to book like an hour uh, of an <laughs> LTV? Can, can it do donuts? Great. How does it handle? So <laughs> It handles fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure we have some, some footage we can share with you of, of our testing that we do in, uh, you know, lunar test facilities. <laughs> Uh, is it, but, uh, is it know, testing, AJ, or is it testing, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> More helpful questions from Tarek Malik, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just, I just want to know. <laughs> I want to know.